Hi friends, welcome back to our channel. If you are passionate about your professional growth, eager to learn new things and ready to embark on a journey of growth, you are in the right place. We believe in the power of knowledge and the joy of continuous learning. Today we'll discuss about Cleta, which is an autonomous maintenance tool in TPM. Here we will discuss about Introduction of Cleta Concept 10 Steps for Effective Cleaning 10 Steps for Effective Lubrication 10 Steps for If Inspection 10 Steps for Effective Tightening 10 Steps for Effective Adjustment The Zero Failure Principle Examples of Cleta Activity Next Introduction of Cleta or What is Cleta? Cleta means the slick representation for the operation cleaning, inspection, retightening, lubrication. If it is done regularly with proper time interval, then breakdown will be minimized. Generally, Cleta is an activity in which time is observed for which later, after completing step 3 in JA, can compare it with initial Cleta timing activity, and we can conclude the reduction in Cleta timing. Cleta refers to C for cleaning, L for lubrication, I for inspection, T for tightening, A for adjust. Initial stage to implement Cleta technique is to all the components must be labeled with serial number. It is one the major activity of the operator before starting his daily work. This comes under the autonomous maintenance. Jishu Hosen. Next, Cleta is all about thought change or mindset change of operators in every industry. As we all know, old concept in the industry was, I operate the machine and somebody will maintain it. But as per industry revolution, new concept is, I operate the machine and I maintain it. This will help to increase the life of machine and also safety of both operator and machine. Also, for daily inspection operator can use five senses. Such as eye to see the issue. Use your eyes to weigh inspect equipment, workspaces and materials for any abnormalities, damage or issues. Look for signs of wear and tear, leaks or any deviations from the normal condition. Second, nose to smell. The sense of smell can detect unusuals, which may indicate potential problems. For example, a burning smell could suggest overheating or electrical issues, while a gas odor could signal a leak. Third, hear to noise. Listen for abnormal sounds or noises during equipment operation. Unusual vibrations, grinding, or squealing noises may indicate mechanical issues. Regular monitoring of the ambient noise level can also help identify changes. Fourth, touch for checking vibration level. Use your hands and sense of touch to for vibrations, temperature changes, or irregularities in surfaces. Checking for proper tension. Alignment or smooth operation through touch can reveal issues that may not be immediately visible. Lastly, tongue for taste. While the sense of taste is not clearly used in workplace inspections, it's metaphorically included in the 5S methodology to emphasize thoroughness. In reality, tasting is not recommended due to safety concerns. Instead, this aspect encourages a comprehensive and detailed examination of work environment. Implementing these sensory-based inspections as part of a routine maintenance program can help identify potential problems early on, allowing for proactive intervention and preventing more significant issues. Always prioritize safety, use appropriate protective measures when conducting inspections, especially in industrial or hazardous environments. Next, what is autonomous maintenance in short? It is a shared responsibility of maintaining basic conditions, 
of equipment between trim and maintenance. Cleta refers to a set of activities within the context of autonomous maintenance, particularly in the realm of total productive maintenance, TPM. The Cleta principle involves a series of routine tasks performed by operators to maintain and optimize equipment reliability. Here's a breakdown of the Cleta principle. Cleta is a type of daily or time-based maintenance. Cleaning Regular cleaning of equipment is crucial to prevent the accumulation of dirt, debris, and contaminants. Clean equipment is less prone to malfunctions and breakdowns. Lubrication Adequate lubrication ensures that moving parts within machinery operate smoothly, reducing friction and wear. Proper lubrication is essential for preventing premature event failure. Tightening Regular inspections help identify potential issues or abnormalities before they escalate into more significant problems. This proactive approach allows for timely maintenance and reduces the risk of unplanned downtime. Inspection Checking and tightening loose bolts, nuts, or fasteners is essential to maintain the structural integrity of the equipment. Loose components can lead to vibrations, misalignments, and other issues. Adjustment Fine-tuning adjusting equipment settings ensures that it operates within optimal parameters. This helps in achieving better performance, efficiency, and product quality. The CLETA principle is a systematic approach that empowers operators to take responsibility for the day-to-day -day and maintenance of equipment. By integrating these routine tasks into the daily workflow, organizations can improve overall equipment effectiveness, reduce downtime, and extend the lifespan of machinery. It's worth noting that TPM and related prints may evolve and specific terminology or practices can vary between industries and organizations. Always refer to the latest and most authoritative sources within your specific context for the most accurate information. Next, 10 steps involved in effective cleaning as part of the CLETA principle within the context of autonomous maintenance. First, identification of cleaning areas. Identify the specific areas of equipment or machinery that require cleaning. Focus on surfaces, components, or parts that are prone to accumulating dirt, debris, or contaminants. Second, preparation. Gather the necessary cleaning tools and supplies, including appropriate cleaning agents, brushes, cloths, and any personal protective equipment PPE, required. Ensure that the equipment is shut down and isolated, if necessary, to guarantee safety during the cleaning process. Third, removal of loose debris. Start by removing loose dirt, dust, or debris using methods such sweeping, vacuuming, or blowing. Use brushes or compressed air to reach into crevices, corners, and other hard-to-reach areas. Fourth, application of cleaning agents. Apply the appropriate cleaning agents or detergents to surfaces based on the tough material and the nature of the contaminants. Follow manufacturer recommendations for dilution ratios and application methods. Allow the cleaning agents to dwell for the recommended contact time to maximize effectiveness. Fifth, scrubbing or wiping. Use brushes, sponges, or cloths to scrub or wipe surfaces thoroughly. Pay attention to areas with stubborn stains, residues, or buildups. Ensure that the cleaning process is systematic, covering all targeted surfaces. Sixth, rinse or roll off cleaning agents. Rinse surfaces with water or use clean, damp cloths to remove any remaining cleaning agents. 
Proper rinsing helps prevent residue buildup and ensures that the cleaned surfaces are free from potentially harmful chemicals. 7th Allow cleaned surfaces to air dry or use clean, dry cloths to remove excess moisture. Proper drying is crucial to prevent the growth of mold, mildew, or corrosion. 8th Inspection Conduct a visual inspection of the cleaned areas to ensure that all contaminants have been effectively removed. Check for any signs of damage, wear, or issues that may require further attention. Ninth Documentation Document the cleaning activities, including the date, areas cleaned, cleaning agents, and any observations or issues identified. Maintain records for future reference and analysis. 10. Continuous improvement. Encourage feedback from operators involved in the cleaning process to identify opportunities for improvement. Use data from inspections and equipment performance to refine cleaning procedures and preventive maintenance schedules. Implementing these steps as part of the CLETA principle supports a proactive approach to equipment maintenance, contributing to overall equipment reality and longevity within the framework of autonomous maintenance. Next, 10 steps for effective lubrication as part of the CLETA principle within the context of autonomous maintenance. First, identification of lubrication points. Identify the lubrication points on the equipment or machinery. These points could include bearings, gears, sliding surfaces, and other moving components. Second, selection of lubricants. Choose the appropriate lubricants based on the specific requirements of each cation point. Consider factors such as temperature, load, speed, and environmental conditions. Third, Lubrication Schedule Establish a lubrication schedule outlining how often lubrication should be performed for each point. The frequency vary based on factors like equipment usage and operating conditions. Fourth, Preparation of Lubrication Tools Gather the necessary lubrication tools, including grease guns, oil cans, or automated lubrication systems. Ensure that tools are clean and free from contaminants. Fifth, Equipment Shutdown or Isolation If required, shut down or isolate the equipment to ensure safety during the lubrication process. Follow proper lockout and tagout procedures to prevent accidental startup. Sixth, Removal of Old Lubricant Before applying new lubricant, Remove any old or contaminated lubricant from the lubrication points. This step is crucial for maintaining the effectiveness of the lubrication. 7. Application of lubricant. Apply the appropriate amount of lubricant to each lubrication point. Use the correct technique to ensure even distribution and prevent over lubrication or under lubrication. 8. Visual inspection. While applying lubricant, visually inspect the lubrication points for signs of wear, damage, or abnormalities. Report any issues that may require further attention. 9. Verification of lubrication levels Verify that the lubrication levels are within the recommended range after applying the lubricant. Overfilling or underfilling can have adverse effects on equipment performance. 10th Documentation Document the lubrication activities, including the date, lubrication points addressed, type and quantity of lubricant used, and any observations made the process. Maintain a lubrication log for each piece of equipment to track trends and identify potential issues over time. Effective lubrication is critical for reducing friction, preventing wear and ensuring the smooth operation of machinery. By incorporating these steps into the CLETA principle, 
organizations aim to enhance equipment reliability and longevity as part of their autonomous maintenance strategy. Next, 10 steps for effective inspection as part of the Cleta principle within the context of autonomous maintenance. First, identification of inspection points. Identify critical inspection points on the equipment or machinery. These points include wear prone areas, components under high stress, and locations where issues are likely to occur. Second, establishment of inspection schedule. Develop a regular inspection schedule, specifying how often inspections should be conducted for each identified point. The frequency may vary based on factors such as equipment usage, operating conditions, and historical performance data. Third, preparation of inspection tools. Gather the necessary inspection tools such as measurement instruments, gauge thermometers, or visual inspection aids. Ensure that tools are calibrated and in good working condition. Fourth, equipment shutdown or isolation. If required, shut down or isolate the equipment to ensure safety during the inspection process. Follow proper lockout or tagout procedures to prevent accidental startup. Fifth, Visual Inspection Conduct a visual inspection of the identified points. Look for signs of wear, corrosion, leaks, misalignments, or any visible abnormalities. Sixth, Measurement and Testing Use appropriate measurement tools to assess critical parameters such as dimensions, temperatures, pressures, or other relevant variables. Perform any necessary tests to ensure functionality. 7th, Compton with Standards Compare the inspection results with established standards or specifications. This helps determine whether the equipment is operating within acceptable tolerances. 8th, Recording of Inspection Data Record all inspection data, including measurements, observations and any anomalies detected. Documentation is essential for tracking equipment condition over time and identifying trends. Ninth, Identification of Potential Issues Based on inspection findings, identify potential issues or areas that may require corrective action. Early detection allows for proactive maintenance and minimizes the risk of unexpected failures. Tenth, Feedback and Communication Communicate inspection results to relevant personnel, including maintenance teams or supervisors. Provide feedback on the condition of the equipment and any recommended actions for further investigation or maintenance. Regular inspections are a key component of autonomous maintenance, allowing operators to actively contribute to the identification and resolution of issues before they escalate. By following these steps within the CLETA framework, organizations can enhance the reliability and performance of their equipment. Next, 10 Steps for Effective Tightening as of the CLETA principle within the context of autonomous maintenance. First, Identification of Fastening Points Identify all the critical fastening points on the equipment or machinery. These points could include bolts, nuts, screws, and other fasteners. Second, Establishment of Tightening Schedule Develop a regular tightening schedule. Specifying how often tightening should be performed for each identified point. The frequency may vary based on factors such as equipment usage, operating conditions, and historical performance data. Third, preparation of tightening tools. Gather the necessary tightening tools, such as wrenches, torque wrenches, or other specialized tools. Ensure that tools are in good condition and calibrated appropriately. Fourth, equipment shutdown or isolation. 
if required, shut down or isolate the equipment to ensure safety during the tightening process. Follow proper lockout or tagout procedures to prevent accidental startup. Fifth, visual inspection. Before time, visually inspect the fastening points for any signs of looseness, misalignment, or damage. Address any visible issues before proceeding with the tightening process. Sixth, use of torque wrench or tightening tool. Use a torque wrench or an appropriate tie tool to achieve the specified torque for each fastening point. Follow manufacturer specifications or engineering standards for the correct torque values. Seventh, sequence of tightening. If applicable, follow the recommended sequence for tightening multiple fast. This helps distribute the load evenly and ensures proper alignment. Eighth, double checking. Double check the tightness of fasteners after the initial tightening. This step ensures that all fasteners are appropriately secured and reduces of uneven tightness. Ninth, recording of tightening data. Record all tightening data, including the date, fastening points addressed, torque values used, and any observations made during the process. Documentation is essential for tracking equipment condition over time. Tenth, Feedback and Communication Communicate tightening results to relevant personnel, including maintenance teams or supervisors. Provide feedback on the condition of the fasteners and any recommended actions for further investing or maintenance. Effective tightening is crucial for maintaining the structural integrity of equipment and preventing issues related to loose components. By incorporating these steps into the CLETA framework, organizations can contribute to the overall reliability and safety of their machinery. Next, 10 steps for effective adjustment as part of the CLETA principle within the context of autonomous maintenance. First, Identification of Adjustable Points Identify all the critical adjustable points on the equipment or machinery. Could include settings, clearances, alignments, or any other parameters that may need adjustment. Second, Establishment of Adjustment Schedule Develop a regular adjustment schedule specifying how often adjustments should be made for each identified point. The frequency may vary based on factors such as equipment usage, operating conditions, and historical performance data. Third, preparation of adjustment tools. Gather the necessary adjustment tools such as wrenches, screwdrivers, shims, other specialized tools. Ensure that tools are in good condition and appropriate for the adjustment tasks. Fourth, Equipment Shutdown or Isolation If required, shut down or isolate the equipment to ensure safety during the adjustment process. Follow proper lockout or tagout procedures to prevent accidental startup. Fifth, Visual Inspection Before making adjustments, Visually inspect the components to identify any visible issues or signs of misalignment. Address any visible problem before proceeding with the adjustment. Sixth, use of adjustment tools. Use the appropriate adjustment tools to make the necessary adjustments to settings, clearances, or alignments. Follow manufacturer specifications or engineering standards for the correct adjustment values. Seventh, sequence of adjustment. If applicable, follow a recommended sequence for making adjustments to multiple components. This helps ensure that adjustments are made systematically and do not negatively impact other parts of the equipment. Eighth, verification of adjustment. Verify the effectiveness of the adjustment by checking the performance of the equipment. 
This may involve testing the equipment under normal operating conditions to ensure that the desired outcomes have been achieved. Hint, recording of adjustment data. Record all adjustment data, including the date, points adjusted, adjustment values used, and any observations made during the process. Documentation is essential for tracking equipment condition over time. Feedback and Communication Communicate adjustment results to relevant personnel, including maintenance teams or supervisors. Provide feedback on the condition of the adjusted components and any recommended actions for further investigation or maintenance. Effective adjustments contribute to the optimal performance, efficiency, and product quality of equipment. By incorporating these steps into the CLETA framework, organizations can actively contribute to the overall reliability and functionality of their machinery. Next, what is Zero Failure Principle? It helps to expose hidden defects and prevent quality and functional failures before they happen. The Iceberg Principle, also known as the tip of the iceberg, is a metaphorical concept often used to describe situations where only a small, visible part of a larger issue or problem is apparent, while a more significant portion remains hidden beneath the surface. This metaphor is derived from the way an iceberg floats in the water, with roughly 90% of its mass submerged below the surface. In various contexts, the iceberg principle highlights the idea that what is readily visible is just a fraction of the total issue, and a more substantial and often more complex portion is concealed. In the context of maintenance, the iceberg principle can be applied to emphasize the idea that observable issues or failures represent only a small portion of the potential problems within a system or equipment. Much like an iceberg, where only a fraction is visible above the waterline, maintenance issues often have underlying as apparent factors that can contribute to the observed problems. Here's how the iceberg principle may apply to maintenance. Visible failures The tip of the maintenance iceberg consists of the observable failures or issues that are easily noticed. These may include equipment breakdowns, malfunctions, or other visible signs of deterioration. Then, underlying causes. Beneath the surface, there are often hidden or underlying causes for the observed failures. These causes can include facts such as poor maintenance practices, inadequate training, insufficient lubrication, improper calibration, or aging components. Then do proactive maintenance. The iceberg principle underscores the importance of proactive maintenance rather than reactive measure. Instead of waiting for visible failures to occur, maintenance teams should engage in regular inspections, preventive maintenance, and condition monitoring to address potential issues before they manifest. Then find all systemic issues. Beyond individual equipment failures, there may be systemic issues related to the overall maintenance strategy or organizational practices. For example, issues with spare parts management, documentation, or communication can contribute to recurring problems. Then see life cycle considerations. The iceberg principle encourages a holistic view of the equipment life cycle. Beyond the immediate maintenance needs, factors such as design considerations, material quality, and the operating environment may contribute to long-term reliability or volatility. Then data and monitoring. Utilizing data and advanced monitoring technologies is a way to explore the submerged part of the maintenance iceberg. Predictive maintenance, IoT sensors and data analytics can help identify trends, anomalies, and potential issues before they become visible failures. By applying the iceberg principle to maintenance, 
organizations can develop a comprehensive maintenance strategy that addresses not only the immediate issues but also the underlying factors that may contribute to long-term reliability and performance. This proactive approach can lead to increased equipment uptime, extended asset life, and improved overall operational efficiency. Next, Analysis of Zero Principle The analysis you provided outlines the zero principle in the context of machine life cycle, with time on the x-axis and reliability of the machine on the y-axis. Let's break down each phase. When machine run continuously then then life of machine reduces as time passes. This phase is called as accelerate deterioration. In the early stages of a machine's life, there is a natural tendency for its reliability to decrease over time, especially if it opts continuously without proper maintenance. This phase is referred to as accelerate deterioration. As time progresses, wear and tear, along with potential operational stresses, contribute to a decline in reliability. But if we do cleta on regasis, then it definitely will improve the life of that machine. This phase is called as normal deterioration. The application of continuous learning and improvement through analysis, cleta, on a regular basis helps mitigate the natural deterioration of the machine. Regular maintenance and monitoring allow for the identification and rectification of issues before they become critical. This phase is called normal deterioration because, while there is still a decline in reliability over time, it is a more controlled and manageable process compared to the accelerated phase. But if you want the machine as brand new condition always, then do cleta and restoration or preventive maintenance of machine time to time, then machine will perform as a new machine. This phase is called as original condition. If both cleta and restoration or preventive maintenance activities are performed consistently, the machine can be maintained in a state close to its original condition. This involves restoring any worn or damaged components to their initial specifications. This phase aims to keep the machine operating at a level similar to when it was first commissioned. But if we do cleta, preventive maintenance along with improvements in machine then definitely machine will work or perform better, where aging of machine will not cause any issue. This phase is called as improvement phase. Going beyond just maintaining the original condition, the improvement phase involves incorporating enhancements and upgrades into the machine. This can include technological improvements, design changes, or FNC upgrades. The goal is not only to sustain the machine but also to improve its performance and reliability over time. In this phase, the machine can operate at an optimal level without being significantly affected by the normal aging process. In sum, the zero principle underscores the importance of proactive and continuous efforts to maintain and improve machine reliability throughout its life cycle. By implementing CLETA, regular maintenance, and incorporating improvements, organizations can extend the operating life of machines, reduce the likelihood of failures, and enhance overall performance. This approach aligns with the principles of reliability-centered maintenance and contributes to achieving a balance between machine age and reliability. Next, Fishbone Drum of a Bearing Failure A fishbone diagram, also known as Ishikawa or Cause and Effect Diagram, is a visual representation used to identify and explore potential causes of a specific problem or issue. In your case, you've outlined the causes of a bearing. 
Each branch of the fishbone represents a category of potential causes contributing to the bearing failure. The bones extending from each category represent specific factors or issues within that category. Let's organize these causes into a fishbone diagram. Manpower issues related to human factors, training and skills. It may be Lack of operator training Inadequate maintenance skills Incorrect installation Machine problems associated with the equipment itself, including design and load considerations. It may be Equipment misalignment Excessive load on the bearing Poor machine design Method challenges related to the processes and methods employed, such as lubrication and alignment thesis. It may be Improper lubrication methods Incorrect bearing selection Lack of proper alignment Material problems related to the quality and specifications of materials used in the bearing and related components. May be Use of substandard bearings Contaminated lubricants Inadequate material specifications Measurement issues related to monitoring, measurement tools and inspection practices. It may be Lack of regular monitoring Inaccurate measurement tools Infrequent inspections Mother nature or environments External factors like temperature and working conditions. It may be High temperatures Contaminated working and Inadequate sealing Next If we do the RCA mean root cause analysis then you will find Equipment misalignment Excessive load on the bearing may contribute 35% of issue for bearing fail. Incorrect installation 20% contributor. Improper lubrication methods may be 12% contributor and all other 14 causes contribution may be 23% contributor. So, attack on first 3 main issues which will solve 77% of total bearing for cause. Next see a CLETA activity check sheet as a sample. Where references, criteria, which equipment, where and what type of activity to be done and by how to be filled. Also, have to monitor the frequency of each activities with responsible person for that activity. This will help you track and adhere CLETA activity without fail. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to like and subscribe our channel for more such insights. Don't hesitate to drop your comments and questions down below. We love hearing from you and who knows, your question might be featured in our next video. Thank you.